It's fast, it's slick, it's mean, it's manipulative, it's backbiting and backstabbing. It's absolutely vicious, cruel and not always particularly fair. This is Share Shootout. I'm Bruce Whitfield. You are watching CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. Now, so who got the short end of the iron ore stick between ArcelorMittal and Kumba? If Shanghai Zendai expects to make a 100% return from its purchase of the Modafontein plot, did AECI underprice Africa's New York? And who was actually to blame for commerce since crash and burn this week? It was entertaining, if nothing else. We don't know the answers to these puzzling questions, but what we do know is we have a guy who wanted to be Indiana Jones growing up, going against the Buckinghamshire expatriate. Introducing the champion with eight appearances, five wins and three losses. Gary, the view is so cool from up here, boys. And now from Bunani Private Clients, he takes on the challenger with one appearance. And that appearance was a lost. Clive, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Ramati Bella Smith, the house rules. Both of our guests have pre picked three shares. Neither knows what the other holds, but they must accept at least one of their competitors' stocks. The longer they leave it, the more likely they are to have to accept something they really don't like. Each has got 30 seconds for their stock pick, so let's get started. Clive, I think we'll start with you, because you need a fighting chance. I do, you? really. You do need great. a fighting chance, because your track record so far has been not even patchy, it's just been pretty abysmal. Yeah. Let's not talk about it. It's embarrassing. Okay, well, um, <laughs> so your stock picks. Right, um, no, they're not. Actually, you've both been very sensible this evening, which is going to make picking a winner that much harder. So it's going to be about the arguments. It's going to be about how mean you are. It's going to be how much you undermine and undercut and stab your opponents in the back. So, Clive Ramati Smith from Nkunzi Investments, your first pick this evening is the 1.5 trillion rand giant of British American Tobacco, 30 seconds. An absolute brilliant uh, company. World Darvish fight, geographically fantastic. The management's very strong and understands their market. Despite all the, necess the uh, tax implications, despite all the negativity around how you actually smoke cigarettes, people don't stop smoking and they love the cancer, so they, can t they carry on and just smoke and smoke and smoke. The growing population and the multiples uh, going into the future, I'm going along with this one because I believe it's a good story um, that we will tell our children one day about how not to smoke when about half a billion people around the world are smoking. We go, <laughs> don't smoke. <laughs> and take the, take the oxygen back again. That's it. He, he, his body is his temple, but does he have the same <laughs> investment principles? Because yeah. you wouldn't let one of those things pass your lips, would you, Gary Boyson? No, of course not. You wouldn't. No, but would no, you let no. one of the shares pass it's into easy. your portfolio? I started, I quit. It's simple to quit. Oh, it's right. easy. <laughs> yes. oh. now, one and a half billion people in the world struggle with what yeah. you did. But um, you're disciplined. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looking at the like the ATR, obviously it's a it's a fantastic company. You can't deny that. But uh, you know there are there are some issues around it. I mean, you know, if you look at uh, so sort of as an investment case, looking at British American tobacco, it trades it trades fairly similar to a bond because it's you know it's multinational, it's very stable, it pays a fairly good yield, not not fantastic. But I mean, in this environment where yields are so low, I mean, guys hunting around for it, you'll go and buy British American tobacco. You start seeing uh, you know stimulus unwind in the U.S. You start seeing um, you, you know yields push up. I think a lot of the investors that have moved into British American tobacco over the last, say, two, three years are going to pull out of it. And I don't think you're going to see those, those fantastic returns that because you would have in the past. It has been a dividend play, and that's what mm. it's really been. It's had nice capital growth as well over the so last three years. It's been very, very strong performer. Mm. But what about the tapering argument, which may or may not happen in our lifetimes. I don't mm. think that will do any much difference in any case. When they look at the South African space, for example, this company is contributing about 70% of its revenue to the government. So first and foremost, that is a very fantastic uh, tool to use uh, um, if, you're, if you're somebody that's uh, uh, an optimistic investor. Second of all, they are diversified. They're sitting in 185 countries around the world, of which 50 of they're actually these very strong holds. So, I mean, I would, argue and say, really, is this a company aren't you want to let go of? Aren't there more, pe more and more governments around the world? The Australians started it by putting pictures of rotten lungs on the boxes saying, this stuff can kill you. We know smokers are addicts and they find it hard to quit. But that message has got to filter, cigarette joke, <laughs> down at some point. Does it not, Gary? Um, yeah, and regulations are, are going to become more and more of an issue. I mean, you've already seen, you know, advertising ban. It didn't, didn't have a massive impact that everyone was expecting it to have on, on BAT. But th the fact is, when you've got government set against you, I mean, you know, I take the tax argument that they are going to get paid on it. But, uh, you know, when you, you, you have, you know, governments against you and regulation against you, it's, it's, not, it's not exactly an optimistic view. Like I said, I like the company, but, uh, you know, for, for me, it's the regulation's not the issue. The issue is it's a safe company. It's something that isn't going to perform on a relative basis as well as something else if the economy uh, really starts kicking and we see tapering. Do I smell gunpowder? 
Shoot it down. You're shooting it down. Shoot it You've down. been shot down, Clive, on your first <laughs> I'll need a lucky strike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it was no lucky strike. Uh, you've seen your Rothmans. Right, uh, Gary Boyson from Bonani Private Clients. Uh, I'm interested in this one because it has been a stellar performer. It is a proxy for the South African economy in many ways. Mm -hmm. It does have a very decent offshore food services business. Mm -hmm. The company, of course, I refer to is... Good. He's alarmed and surprised. Bidvest in 30 seconds. Bidvest. Uh, and we're going, going on Bidvest, uh, you know, almost purely on track record performance. If you look at their, their return on equity over the last 10 years, constantly above the sort of 20%. It's, it's a business that continues to perform. It's got increase in cash flows. It's an incredibly strong balance sheet, which poises it for, you know, future acquisitions. I mean, we've seen the, you know, Brian Joffe still very, very, you know, acquisitive. He, you know, he obviously made the bid on, on Adcock. Uh, AMAPs went through. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a track record of ac acquisition, and you're going to see the growth coming through from there. It is a little bit of uh, you know, like you said, South Africa plays with the South African mm -hmm. economy turn around. But, but you overall, were a cheat. overall stop cheating. Overall, is going to keep it going. I'll give you an extra 10 seconds too, Clive. It's <laughs> Fantastic. <okay>. Um, <laughs> again, Mr. Mr. Track Record over here dismisses British American of Tobacco's <laughs> track record and says, but in my case, this time it's different. For Bidvest, the track record tell is relevant. Tell me, tell me. I mean, I don't know have to say a lot, but it's, it's not necessarily diversified companies. It, like he just mentioned himself, it's very, very focused in South Africa. Besides that, I don't see any growth plans out of, of, out of Bithbest going into the next 10 years. What are they going to do? How are they going to actually diversify the company? Um, it is already massively diversified. Mm. It is already probably the most diversified South African company on the JSE. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not going to argue that, but what I will argue is now in the next f f two to three years, you need a well diversified, geographically well diversified business, and I don't mm. think they're that. Okay, uh, I, I argue the geography. I would, yeah, I would say they, they geographically they are fairly well diversified and, and probably are going to increase. I mean, a lot of their revenue does come from South Africa, but I mean they've got. I think I mean these I think are 2011 numbers. You're looking at I think it's about it will probably so, um, what's it? Uh, Europe is about say whatever Europe. I think Europe was about uh, 20 billion. Uh, then you've got Australia. No, Australia is 20 billion. Then Europe's twice that, and then uh, South Africa makes mm. twice that again. So I mean, it is fairly well diversified. You look at. I mean, obviously they've been buying things in Chile. They've been buying things in the UK. I mean, that's that's where I think the growth is going to come from. I mean, it's uh, it, you know it's that acquisition. I mean, Bidvest has proven that the businesses that it holds. You know, while they are diversified across food services and all sorts of services and fairly defensive sectors, it's very difficult for Bidvest to grow margins. And but mm. that that is not necessarily the growth case. They're not looking for organic growth. They, they've proven they, their growth is going to come from acquisitions and, and smart acquisitions. And uh, that's, that's where we see the potential. And what they don't do is chase everything that moves because they, they made a pitch for Adcock Ingram mm -hmm. um, for the distribution business of Smarties Absolutely. and Pills and all that sort of stuff. Um, CFR came in and there's a bit of a resistance to CFR right now. Um, but Brian Joffe did chase off to Adcock Ingram. He goes, you know what, if you don't want me as your partner, that's fine. I'll go elsewhere. I've got lots of money. I've got lots of cash. I can invest it as I choose. Tell me about Bidvest, whether or not you accept it, or whether you shoot it I down. cannot accept it, unfortunately. You cannot Still. accept it? No, I refuse to accept it. You so refuse to accept it? I do. <laughs> absolutely. He's I mean, principled, I, and you're, I, you're I, against this. I, I am absolutely against it, simply because I don't think it's a company that you want to go for long. I don't think it's a business that will be diversified in the next 10 years. Okay. I think they're very limited. Despite being um, uh, investing in different type of assets, I think the important thing now, going to the global spectrum of things, I want to see, if you're investing places like Europe, for example, in America, who are growing at 2 or 2.5% two, two growth. I don't think that's we a good We need to stop you. Shoot him down. Put him out of his misery. <laughs> euthanize <laughs> him. Bang. You're euthanized on that particular one. A friend of mine was in the UK recently, um, went into a pub, had a Peroni, went outside, went across to the Nando's, had some Nando's, and as he came in, almost walked straight into a Bidvest food services truck. <laughs> he said, hold on a second, where am I? <laughs> um, you know, yeah, and, and, sure. and the reality is that these yeah. companies are massively diversified mm. in the global environment. Mm. Um, um, I told him you should have been a bit more adventurous. Go and have, <laughs> don't have Nando's, don't have Peroni when you're in London. But hey, um, he was feeling homesick. Um, all right, so Clive Ramatibella smith uh, British American Tobacco was shot down. You're sticking with bad habits, though, because you're a fan of the good bad habit. Uh, please, will you tell me, in 30 seconds or less, why you are a fan of Distel? Because it's dry and you can drink it. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of being here is that it's a very, very well diversified company. Never going to get to SAB's level, but they've done very well. Got new management in, uh, starting in 2014. I think the guy's very well uh, no noticed around the world because he's got international experience. I think he's going to do 
very, very well. And uh, I look at them and I think to myself, what's stopping them to actually beat SAB, apart from the fact that they haven't actually structured things appropriately internationally? So that's what they're looking to do now, to diversify. And the reason that I appointed this new guard okay. is to help them do that. Let's stop there. Ex pronounce their whiskey brand, the Scottish whiskey brand that they bought. Oh, dear me. And I know this. It's B-U-N-M-A-B-H... I N or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's what is it? Brukahain. Yeah. <laughs> it's like something Brukahain. like Brukahain. Yeah. Now, yeah. yeah. And then they also they brought a cognac brand called Bisky. Bisky. <laughs> Can't just buy things Bisky. we can pronounce <laughs> like Clipdrift. Yeah. What's wrong with these people? Anyway, yeah. they've, they've made some very <laughs> interesting acquisitions. They're going into that international luxury yeah. spirit space as well. Yeah. Um, they've got the South African market tied up. They're now going international. It's an interesting prospect, but. It trades at even a higher multiple than the other bad habit of British American tobacco, Gary. Yeah, uh, multiples are very high in the sector. I mean, you know, we when we look at uh, you know sort of like food and beverage, I mean, we, we consider it a sell, but I mean, we always go for SAB over and above that, mm. simply because of the geographic diversification, and not not just because of that, because it's it's a, already a leader in most of its markets. And I mean, once you know, once you, you sort of you get that 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 market share, I mean, you can really push in other products. You, you can you can bring in everything. You've got all the distribution relationships. So for us, you know, to go especially into you know this uh, you know to sort of sort of alcoholic beverages we, we definitely look at sab you know it's got the emerging market exposure and it's got and it's got what 25 percent of distel yeah it has that exposure yeah, already we would we would rather then enter into through sab mm. so okay um, any, any last defenses before he takes your crate of clip drift and chucks it off the <laughs> back i don't know if, if, if sab will have the same diversification as um, distel has in terms of the wine market i still think that's very very good in that side well, yeah. uh, wine wine's interesting because there is a global wine shortage yeah. There was a figure out the other day that there was going to be this global Australia wine Australia is trading the ma most, most amount of wine than any other country with China. So yeah. there's an opportunity there for them to start thinking if, about. If you want to invest in wine, I mean, there's all sorts of fancy ETFs these days. You can go and buy, <laughs> yeah, have you, like, I can't remember its name, but I mean, you can buy the wine ETF. Is there a yeah. wine ETF? Wine ETF that takes, yeah. I think it's the 200, uh, you know, the top 200 um, sellers in, yes. in France. And it, it, you, your wine is actually backed by wine. Same as the new gold ETF yes. is backed by gold. It's backed by wine. It's, you know, stuck underground. The problem is the performance isn't great, even uh -huh. with the short term. Yeah, but, but that's why, but if, you is, if you're going to invest in wine, you yeah, buy yeah. the bottles. Yeah, if it's an alternative, it's an alternative <laughs> investment so and if the price plummets you drink it <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. that way at least you know. you die happy In yeah. days. so I, i'm assuming then uh, we're, we're, we're shooting down to still as well i'm gonna shoot it down Ooh, feeling brave two go. shoot downs in a row okay clive you've been shot down twice in a row both bat mm -hmm. and distel this mm -hmm. evening have both been shot down let's see gary whether or not you can be a little bit more convincing than you were on bidvest as far as testy clive is doing this evening mm -hmm. uh an interesting one companies that build new head offices do they scare you? Because you go to Protea Place in, S in Santon, an old Media 24 building has been glassed and funked mm. up. <laughs> I said funked. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And <laughs> it's got a Grinrod logo on the top. Yeah. In 30 seconds, tell me why you like Grinrod. Grinrod, I mean, again, it's, uh, you know, it used to be a shipping business. Obviously, it's divested a lot from the shipping and really gone into the, the ports, uh, ports and terminals, which, uh, you know, the shipping is very cyclical. Uh, the ports and terminals are a little bit more stable. I mean, they've recently bought Raysec. They're expanding their, their offering in uh, sort of their freight division. Freight, I think, was 75% growth in earnings uh, last results, uh, uh, financial also, you know, 120% growth. And I mean, we, we actually did a management lunch with them yesterday. We expect that to filter through in the next results. Add to that, shipping increasing. <laughs> you want Gary Boysen to pick your share <laughs> on Share Shootout. Take it for lunch uh, the day before we film this. And you're in. Um, you know, Micro Mega lining up and all sorts of guys. <laughs> got to advertise. <laughs> you got to do that. Was lunch good, incidentally? No, it was brilliant. Very well attended. Very well attended. <laughs> what did they serve? <laughs> they, they so yeah. I, I wasn't actually. I didn't actually get to uh, go to the lunch. It was one of our analysts oh, uh, okay, that right. hosted the lunch right. for for investors in on behalf of. Okay, company. did they have distilled products? Um, <laughs> okay, so you like Grinrod, Clive? Mm -hmm. Do you? You look. You, you're pulling that face that says, "I'm not sure." I am not sure, but I do like the Grinrod story. I must be honest. Um, it's 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 one of those companies that I look at, and and there's nothing that I haven't tried. I like the banking side. You know, the investment holding side is very fantastic. Um, in actual fact, they do some sort of business with us as well. So, okay. I mean, they, 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 they know what they're doing, uh, very comprehensive. And I think that um, going into uh, the future, if I say, let me say two, three years, um, they look to be strong and competitor to the likes of uh, Bitvis Bank, 
uh, the likes of Sassman Bank as well. So they're doing pretty well in, 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 in that space. Because those second tier banks have gone very quiet, haven't they? At one yeah. time we had lots of second tier banks. Bitvest Bank has been happily playing in the forex space, but gradually getting pensioners uh, to open cheap accounts with them. Yeah. Sassman in the entrepreneurial space, but Grinrod been very steady, very yeah. easy, doesn't rock the boat. I think you can deposit money with Grinrod at very decent interest rates with Grinrod Bank. Um, so rolling out ATMs yeah, now. but that's not so the primary part of the business. You like Grinrod. Do you like Grinrod more than you like his third pick? I have no idea what the third pick is. <laughs> so precisely, do you like it enough um, to, to risk not Absolutely. waiting for the third I, pick? I like you're Grindrod. taking Grinrod. I'll take Grinrod. You're taking Grinrod. Yeah. You've, you've been accepted on Grinrod. Gary Boyson uh, is feeling uh, is very comfortable with that. So Vindicated. Gary so far has given us Bidvest and Grinrod. Uh, Grinrod, <laughs> Grinrod accepted, Bidvest shot down. <laughs> and then Clive Ramatibella-Smith from Nkunzi Investments. Two shoot downs in a row. Bad habit portfolio this evening. Both British, American tobacco and Distel have been shot down. Gary Boyson's taking a big punt that he'll like the final pick this evening. We'll get into that tough final stretch in a moment, but uh, it's going to be a humdinger. Stand by for that. And at the end of it, of course, we're going to need to pick a winner. Who should it be? Big or tall, large or small? Back in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Foxy, feisty and never frivolous. And that's just my guests. This is Share Shootout here on CNBC Africa. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Welcome to the show this evening. Before the break, Clive and Gary each gave us two of their stock picks. What we've got from Gary Boyson is Bidvest and Grinrod. Grinrod accepted, Bidvest shot down. Uh, Clive Ramatibella Smith from the Investments, British American Tobacco and uh, Distel both shot down. At this stage of the show last week, we had two picks each going into the final round. It became a strategic battleground. It remains a strategic battleground battleground as we dig in and roll up the sleeves as we get into the final share pick. Gary, you need to go first this time and I'm interested as to why you're going for this one because it's very good on the RAND, it's incredibly well diversified which will make Clive happy, mm -hmm. um, it's global, it's got lots of bling which will make him happy. Mm -hmm. you like which one? I'm pretty good. Yeah, Richmond, this is a little bit of a dangerous pick because we actually have results coming out tomorrow. We have had a trading update on their sales for five months. We've only got two months to go. We expect that trend to carry on. We think we're going to see a restocking in China, and uh, and obviously that's going to be very positive for the business. I mean, you know, on, on more of a, you know, if you take a step back, I think I think their brands are strong, they, they're they well established, and they and they make a lot of money, and yeah, Henry Boots very good at what he does. And we gave we gave away a couple of month long pens to clients the other day, and I'm sorry, the intrinsic value of that pen compared to what you sell it at, it, it's, a, it's a winner. But you, you look <laughs> this is one, this is a real one, it was a gift um, and was declared. Uh, but it's <laughs> a, a piece of resin or plastic, there's some metal on the end, some metal on, it's got a nice mechanism. Um, they've got annuity income which comes with it because although the, the refills last for a long time, they don't last forever, so every six months you're going in and you're buying a refill yeah. um, and then you lose the pen and you become used to it because it does feel quite nice. Yeah. So you're then obliged to go buy another one. It's mm. a great business model. Do you like it enough to wave the magic Mont Blanc wand, Clive? Absolutely not. Sorry, I don't think luxury goods is something to go into at the current moment. Wh which, which leaves you with a bit of a problem, doesn't it? Because, uh, I don't know, you accepted Grinrod. Yes, so I you did. played this rather well. Yeah, I did you played So tell me why you don't like luxury goods. Uh, first and foremost, it's getting more and more expensive to put out luxury goods out of the ground. First, and that the raw material. Secondly, China is under pressure to decrease its growth. And they've been the largest consumer of those goods. So I'm very worried that, you know, we're not going to see much participation in, in the likes of China and, and emerging markets for that matter. The other thing that worries me is the fact that interest rate will be going up very soon in Europe and in America. Will people still be able to afford those luxury goods? And that creates a problem for me. So I'm shutting this one down. We can't shoot it down just yet because I'm not ready for you to shoot it down. Just wait a minute, <laughs> then shoot it down. Um, there was a very, very interesting report about a week ago, I mm. think, Gary Boyson, in which it talked about the African, uh, the African continent becoming a new market for luxury goods. If you want to pose and ponce about and mm. be all uh, or showy offy, as we are certainly in this country and many of our compatriots mm -hmm. north of our borders also like to illustrate their wealth. You carry a Louis Vuitton handbag, you keep a Mont Blanc pen in it, you keep a Mont Blanc wallet, you, mm -hmm. you carry the brand so that people can see that you are better than the Joneses or you are the Joneses. Mm -hmm. That is why I buy the long-term luxury goods story because even Johan Rupert has become slightly more confident. After 2008, he was the most bearish person in the market. And uh, and uh, Richemont is up three times since then. Clive, you are shooting it down. You're absolutely determined to shoot I it down. I am absolutely determined. You're not giving it, it any respite whatsoever. No, I, I'd rather choke in this one. 
Okay, <laughs> we're, we're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Clive, very outspoken in his criticism of Richemont. Yeah. Sorry about that, Gary. But uh, which gives us okay. um, a moment or two to then go into your last share, Clive Ramatibella Smith, on a multiple of 16.38 times, a market capitalization of 58 and a half billion rand. What's important about this one is you are going short on Exaro in 30 seconds, tell us why. Apart from meeting the CEO not so long ago, I'm very happy with the structure they've put in place and I like the idea that they've ma actually been making uh, inroads not just in uh, Africa but they've gone already, already now into China and into the, some of the emerging markets even in, uh, in South America. So my, my concern is that we are going to in the short term need more of electricity and that's going to be high demand, that's going to be lots required and that's why government is spending so much towards investing into making sure that Africa is powered. And so therefore, their story is very, very formidable, and I think that's Okay, but why are you then shorting them? Short in the sense that we're not, when I look at what's going to be happening in the next couple of years, I think that, you know, clean energy, as it's called, will start yeah. taking its, 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 so its turn. You like so the CEO, you like yeah. the structure, you like the diversification, yeah. you like what they do, yeah. but you're shorting it because there is a risk from rival, better technology. Yeah, that's it. Okay, That's so the reason. do you accept his short on Exaro? Because he sounds like a guy <laughs> who actually would be going long on this. Yeah, um, I, I do. Yeah, I do accept the short one. I have to accept the short, but I do. I do accept the short. I mean, you know my opinion on, on resources long <laughs> yeah. term. So I think you know the export markets. I mean, obviously China is a huge. It has a huge demand for coal. Yeah. Um, and you know, but a lot of that obviously is in the steel making process. So I think you know short on Exaro at these levels. It's, it's a difficult one. I probably actually wouldn't go naked short on it, but I wouldn't buy it either. So I, w I will accept the short. But uh, yeah, if for me, I don't. You know, I don't. I, I don't. It's not too optimistic. It's got. It's got facets to the business that we also like. But yep. uh, overall, you know, it's, it's continually un underperformed. Uh, you know, every time it seems to make a recovery, it, it pulls back. We, we also, we do like the company. I probably wouldn't go short on it, but I will accept the short. You will accept the short. It's yeah. a better bet than any of the other bets that Cloud yes. has brought to the table this evening. Please explain to me just in a moment, what's the difference between a short and a naked short? Because if you're naked, you ain't wearing shorts. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I mean, are they, too b are they uh, one the same thing? Yeah, naked shorts are actually, yeah, it, it depends. It depends. I mean, obviously financial jog. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it can mean one thing, some things can mean another thing. What does it mean yeah. in this context? In, right in this well, a naked short, obviously, you've got no protection against right. your short. So you just say, I'm going to go short Xaro. You know, if you, if you don't do a naked short, you may be short Xaro against a long bulletin, okay. saying that bulletin's going to outperform. You also get a couple of option strategies around naked shorts versus you know, normal shorts. But generally, what you're doing is, is betting that the company's going to go down. And, and what, what you're saying is, you think he's short. <laughs> okay, so Clive, um, he's accepting your short on, on Xara, but I'm not mm. sure that you buy your own story. I do, I do. I but do. you love the company, and you love, the company. Love, love what they've done. I love the company, but I love the company. <laughs> yes, I would buy the company. <laughs> But you're, going short, but you're going short. I wouldn't short. go naked short. You wouldn't go naked <laughs> short. Go. How, how would you balance that short position then? If you, go, if you wouldn't go naked short, how would you balance the short position? And you go short Xaro, yeah. how do you protect yourself? Protect, protect, protect yourself by looking into certain, and he's going to bite me for this one, but you, know, you, you, look at, you look at the bottoms up approach. That's what I would be concentrating on and looking at where the core values are. And that is what's important for me. So if I can protect it in the short, um, I'd probably go 80, 20, which means that obviously on the up, it'll go 20% and I'll, on the down, I'll go 80. So I'll be very much protected. Sorry, the other way around, it's 20 down. 20 down and, and 80, 80 up. up. Yeah. Okay, Clive Ramitabella Smith. So where do we go with this one then? Producers, you may speak into my ear at any point. Please help <laughs> me, please, in the impossible choice. Because they've gone very safe tonight. Both Gary Boyce and Clive Ramitabella Smith from Kunzi Investments have gone very safe. Uh, do we go with uh, Gary, the trench warfare specialist, the man who so far to date has been here eight times. He's won five. He's lost three do we take it to six and three or do we take it to five and four or do we take Clive Ramitibella Smith with his dreadful track record do we make it one and one or do we make it two nil what should we do with this one I think what we should, should apply BEE status here yeah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> My producers are terribly excited. I've listened to the arguments, and I think we're very evenly balanced. But I cannot, in all conscience, Clive Ramatibella Smith, say that you should come back next week. You need to work harder. You need to try harder. You need to fight harder in the trenches. I didn't accept your Xara position. I think you're in love with the company. I think the short is an excuse. I'm afraid 
Well, that's the short of it gone. The long of it. We'll be back next time as we play Share Shootout once again. Uh, Gary Boyson's picks of Bidvest, Grindwater and Richemont, three very solid companies. Grindwater is accepted. Bidvest and Richemont were shot down. I buy the Richemont story personally. Uh, Clive Ramachabella, Smith, British American Tobacco and Distel. Fun, a bad habit. Good companies as well. Exaro going short. Unfortunately, Clive didn't put a case in case. He's a good contender, however. We'll invite him back once he gets from back from purgatory at some point. We'll be back again next week as we pit our winner. He's now been on the program nine times. He's won six. He's lost three against a worthy challenger right here on the most vicious stock picking show on TV. Tweet me your share, shootout suggestions, and your thoughts. And if I got it wrong this evening, at Bruce Business, you tell me. And then also uh, to the, the pink set as well. If the pink set thinks it can be better, should we invite Paul Turon? Should we invite Paul Turon onto the show and put it against our lanky winner this evening? Think about that one. Tell me at Bruce Business on Twitter.com. Until next time, as we continue to pick out a winner and shoot out the rest. Bye-bye.